Welcome viewers to this video shot on the flat earth. We will be showing to you a Lafayette model RK120 portable three and a half inch reel to reel all metal cased tape recorder from 1962. So in the introduction, you heard that this unit is from the year 1962. That was the year this unit was introduced. But in reality, this particular one was bought in 1963, as you'll be seeing soon. So this unit here comes with the original AC adapter, which is very useful. And um, of course, I do have batteries loaded into the recorder. The recorder runs on six AA cells for nine volts. But here's your original AC adapter. It's in an all metal case. It has a very nice indicator light, uh, even vented, which is, you know, quite something. Interesting looking vents. Here's the bottom of the, of the case. Lafayette Radio AC Adapter, model RK123. AC 115 volts in, DC 9 volts out. And serial number kind of doesn't say anything. Made in Japan, of course. One interesting thing you'll notice is these odd jacks. Look at this blurry red jack here. It's a very odd design. It seems to be proprietary. I don't know if Lafayette used this particular jack for other devices out there. But this is a very odd type of jack, for sure. We also have the foot switch here. I always zoom out first because I'm an idiot. Here you can see the foot switch, huh? The foot switch also has one of those strange types of plugs on it. And whenever you plug the foot switch into the tape recorder, you have to press down on the button in order for the unit to turn the motor on in player record mode. So the idea is you could operate it with your foot. It's the Lafayette radio model RK-122 foot hyphen switch made japan of course also it is in an all metal case this thing was built to last built very sturdy like a flame and tank here you can see the tape recorder the original packing case lafayette radio model rk-120 transistor tape hyphen recorder serial number 5780 lafayette radio electronics corporation Made Japan. I want to give a shout out to Clyde Side because I think he would find this to be a fun recorder. I also want to give a shout out to Amberola 1B because, you know, he gave me this machine. I also want to give a shout out to my friend Jordan, Speaker Freak 95. I recently hung out with him and had some good times with Jordan and hope that he'll come to visit me at some point soon. This is a very nice reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. You can see that it is in a nice uh, leather case. Actually, genuine, actual leather. It's not simulated. It's the real McCoy. So that's pretty cool to see the actual uh, leather case of this reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. Also with the tape recorder is a pouch for the mic. So you can store your microphone in this little pouch here. Pretty nifty, am I right? Also in the box here, we have the original microphone to the Lafayette recorder. Unfortunately, there's a small dent right there. But it's a pretty interesting little mic. It's adorable. It's a cute little mic. But it's kind of, you know, top heavy on the actual case. So when you put it on a table, the microphone tends to want to sag down. My air conditioner is so loud, the noise gate is not keeping it out. Not cool. There. I adjusted my noise gate. Just a little bit. Oh, come on. There. Take... Take that. Is that better? Trying to get the air conditioner out of the, uh, audio. Here you can see the, uh... Gee whiz. Ah, oh, stupid noise gauge. Flame and galah. Anyway, 
Here's a set of instructions on using the splicing block that came with the recorder. And speaking of such a block, here is an actual splicing block. Now, it's a bit of a cheaper production slice splicing block, not a full on professional one. I have an actual splicing block that was owned by my late uncle. Years ago, my beloved uncle Ricky, who unfortunately passed away last year, did uh, a lot of stuff with magnetic tape and as, as well as film. He was a film editor. He made documentary films. He also was a musician and he loved tape recorders and this was his old splicing block. So you can kind of compare this more professional grade splicing block is a lot solid, more solid piece. I think this one's made out of uh, aluminum. This splicing block uh, feels a bit cheaper. Then again, though, it's this recorder is, you know, as you'll hear, DC bias. But anyway, so probably don't expect the highest quality production of things with it, even though the machine is built like a tank. There's actually old splicing tape inside here, as well as razor blades that came with a splicing block. So that's pretty neat how it came with these different accessories. I think that's a really neat thing, how they package the accessories and pre-cut splicing tape inside. Pretty convenient, am I right? Pretty uh, flame and cool, am I right? So that's the little splicing block with the Lafayette Real Real tape recorder. Also with our recorder is the old uh, telephone pickup coil um, for recording telephone conversations. We also have a patch cable for hooking up to a radio. Here is the original leather carrying strap. Here is the original crystal earphone. Um, if any of you have worked with the uh, old Radio Shack uh, 201, 150 in 1, 50 in 1, various numbers in 1, electronic project lab kit to have the spring terminals, You'll probably recognize this style of crystal earphone. We also have the original operating instructions with the recorder. Now, unfortunately, the little manual does not contain the schematic. But don't worry, you still have access to the schematic inside the recorder itself. You can see the bad news is, is given to you on the back. DC bias, DC erasure. Unfortunately, they do not give the frequency response of this recorder on the specs. I don't know why. There's no frequency response given on the manual. Though I'll go ahead and say it's not very good. Here you can see the original receipt whenever they bought the recorder in 1963. More precisely, April 16th of the year 1963. John F. Kennedy was still alive at the time this recorder was bought. Most of my... Portable Real Trio tape recorders are from later in the 60s after Kennedy had already passed away or was shot. But in this recorder, John F. Kennedy was still alive at the time this recorder was bought, so potentially people could have recorded his voice live on machines like this one. Here's original inspection card. The interesting things to note on the inspection card are... Okay, you got OK stamped on various things, but the final inspection, you'll see the stamp there, is Japanese. And you'll see on the little other round stamp there, Japanese characters on there. Of course, I don't know Japanese, so it's not like I can just go start reading it off, but it's pretty cool to see that. Here is the original warranty card from Lafayette Radio for the reel to reel tape recorder. So, pretty cool to have all these little things, a receipt, you know, the inspection card for the recorder, you know, and of course the manual. I'm doing this video in a special way and I'm holding a microphone with one hand. So I can only use one hand to manipulate everything, which makes the quality of this video go down. This is I'm trying trying to do a new approach here um, in this video. Uh, Jordan will immediately know exactly what's going on. He I, I guarantee you, if Jordan, the speaker freak ninety five, sees this, he will know precisely exactly what I am doing here and why this video sounds the way it does. <laughs> 
anyway um so you can see in the manual you got the recorder shown and you got various things recording recording of teleconversations recording radio programs recording from record player level indicator caution when recording rewinding the tape playing back erasing a recorded portion recording time you know stuff like that you know editing a recording storing this tape recorder ac adapter now here's an interesting thing now zooming in and so forth is kind of a pain because i don't have three arms um i want to zoom in here notice the spelling of the word adapter there it's spelled with an o-r now notice the spelling of adapter for the ac adapters case in er if you go and type the word adapter in as sometimes if I'm commenting on a YouTube video and I say the word AC adapter and I spell it with an OR it calls it misspelled but really it is a correct spelling to use both an OR or an ER depending on the function of the adapter adapter with an ER tends to signify a person who adapts to things Oh, he adapts well to that situation. He's an adapter with an ER. If you're using the term adapter in more of a technical sense, like an adapter to convert AC to DC, an adapter to convert one jack to another, then adapter would more appropriately be spelt with an OR when signifying something technical. I think that is a much better way I have always, when I go for technical, I like it when it has an OR because most technical things, you go technical with something and you're going to start using an OR instead of an ER. That's just how it is. So anyway, just wanted to clear that up about the word adapter. Some of you all may, may have not known that. But you can, you can use an ER if you want. It's really, I think it's better to use an OR for something technical in my opinion. But here is the Lafayette Real Real Tape Recorder. I haven't even showed you this operate yet. I've been chin wagging for almost eight solid minutes. And it's a joke, really. I, I've been wasting your time. I, you come to watch this video, you're like, oh, I want to see how this tape recorder sounds, okay? And instead, you're listening to me chin wag for over eight bloody minutes. It's a joke. It's a joke, okay? It's a flaming joke. Anyway, so it's a pretty cool little recorder. You know, you look at the front, you have a you have an opening for your earphone, radio, microphone jacks, your volume control, and of course your control lever. And on the side of the recorder, you have a record interlock. That's not really your record button in a sense. I mean, you have to push it to record, but you have to do that, and you have to move the lever all the way to the record position. That just keeps you from accidentally going to the record position, and then you start erasing stuff you don't want to erase. On the back here, you'll see two colored jacks. A black jack and a red jack. Black jack, not to be confused with the card game, is for your foot switch, which remotely starts and stops the motor. Your red jack is for your AC adapter or 9 volt DC input to your tape recorder. Here you can see the tape recorder. Oh, I just got a text message. Um, anyway, um, so, I'm just give a quick overview of what it looks like before we show uh, operation. I, I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I know, I'm a chin wagger, right? Anyway, the thing is, is, here's the weak link of this recorder in the how far as durability is concerned. Uh, everything is pretty much solid metal with this recorder. Even the head cover is metal. The case is metal. The mechanics are metal. It's fantastic. The downside is the fact that this lever here is made out of plastic. There is a small metal piece inside that actually moves the mechanism, but the housing is plastic. I've seen pictures of similar recorders online in the past, 
where this plastic piece had broken off, and there's already some slight cracks back where the screw is. I just think this is a ticking time bomb, and quite frankly, if they're going to make the whole machine out of metal, why not make this lever out of metal too, make it a little bit more durable right there. I just find it disappointing that they would make this particular part where you're frequently going to apply amounts of torque out of plastic. They should have made that out of metal. Now, this recorder, although it has a radio input, isn't really the best as a music recorder. The audio quality of it is quite limited. It's best really as a dictation machine. But soon I'll be showing operation, but first I want to give a quick overview. It's a manual level control machine, so you have a level meter right here. In playback mode, it monitors your battery. And in record, it monitors your recording level. Then, here is the head cover. Underneath your head cover, you have an erase head, electrical, as well as your record playback head. This recorder actually has a lever which moves the tape away from the heads during rewinding. I really enjoy that design because it lessens head wear. You can also see it's a capstan drive machine with a capstan with a sleeve on it for three and three fourths and pinch roller. To change the speed to 1 and 7 eighths inches per second, remove the capstan sleeve by simply lifting it off. Then you can snap the capstan sleeve into its holder. Here is a lever to operate. Rewind position, play position, and finally, to record, you have to hold in this red button and then Move the lever into record position. Pretty cool, eh? What we will be doing next is going to involve a change in video sound. Currently, I'm using a noise gate for the audio in this video with an Electro Voice 635A microphone. But now we're going to switch to using the built-in microphones of the camera when we show the presentation of the recorder itself recording and playing back sound. We're making a recording on the Lafayette RK120 reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. We're making a recording on the Lafayette RK120 reel-to-reel tape recorder. This is the Lafayette RK120 reel-to-reel tape recorder. The operating speed right now is three and three quarters inches per second. In this particular recording, we are using the original dynamic microphone, which comes with the Lafayette RK120. And we're going to see how the sound quality is. Being a manual level control machine, I can set the level up high and pick up quite well, even at arm's length distance. There's lots of fluctuation on the meter. Lower that level, lower that level, lower that level. We're lowering the level, lowering the level, lowering the level. Recording at 178. 
motor is a five transistor reel to reel tape recorder and not surprisingly uses germanium transistors. Now speaking of germanium transistors in the portions where I had to level all the way up it became clear to me that indeed it sounds like there is a noisy transistor in this recorder so I may go in there at some point and replace that transistor. I do have some old PNP transistors that are old germanium PNP transistors on hand so that should correct that problem but anyway this is what it looks like without reels. It looks pretty cool. It's the reel tables are metal. The case is metal. It's just so much metal it just it really gives it a cool style You can tell by the direction the capstan turns that when you rewind it actually reverses the polarity of the motor. Pretty nifty tape recorder. Obviously not the best sound quality um, tape recorder but it does of course do the job of recording and playing back sound which is its intention. So let's take a look at the back of the recorder or bottom of the recorder. Right here it says made in Japan. The feet actually look to be um, hex screws, which I think is pretty cool. When I take the uh, bottom cover off, you can see the uh, schematic diagram is presented, which of course helps with the servicing of the tape recorder. I wish more devices would have schematics inside like this. It's always helpful. Here you can see, um, it looks pretty cool to change the batteries, of course, taking the back off, you expose the electronics and everything inside the recorder, and just something about that circuit board looks really pretty, really pretty, the layout. Everything is kind of spaced apart, you know, it's a bigger circuit board, but a relatively simple circuit, so you don't have your components all clobbered together, they're all nice and spaced apart. All axial leaded electrolytics, most of them having already been replaced by Ed Ferraro. And um, except for this one here, looks to be original. The batteries is uh, it actually uses six double A's inside this capsule here, with a nine volt connector at the end, which is pretty cool. It also uses a spring driven belt or spring type belt, so expect that to last a very long time anyway it's it's really cool to see this recorder I suppose that this transistor right here is probably the one that's noisy because I imagine it's going to be one of the early stages that's gone noisy um, I'm not going to replace it at this moment but later on I may go into this machine and replace the um, the transistor. It is a pretty fun machine. So far what I had to do to get it to work was um, there's some small switches inside some contacts, metal strips inside. They're hard to get the best shot at with a camera. I might could give it a try. I actually managed to get a camera shot on this, believe it or not. Um, there is a small metal piece here Um, and when you plug in, you'll notice it just pushes slightly away from that contact to disengage the batteries, to plug in the AC adapter, or to disengage the motor always being on to turn the motor on and off when using the foot switch. Those metal pieces were bent out too far and were not making to the other contact even when it was unplugged when I first received this recorder causing it to be inoperative when I first put batteries in it. Bending those metal pieces back fixed that problem. I also had to clean the surface a bit, scraped it with a knife actually because it was badly oxidized on the foot switch control which caused a not so good electrical contact causing lots of speed problems with the motor because there was too much resistance in that connection. 
after cleaning it a bit, the motor problems mostly cleared up. You may be able to hear the noisy transistor. You may have heard the random kind of static noise that was generated from the amplifier. That is a specific kind of static noise that seems to be the telltale signs of a noisy germanium transistor. That's how I was, that's how I determined that the trans, there's probably a noisy transistor because I've encountered noisy transistors before and they sound like that. The interesting thing is I bet a noisy transistor would work well as a, uh, as a noise source for a true random number generator. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video of the Lafayette RK120 reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. But I'm not done yet, because I want to show how this machine records music. I hope you enjoyed this video. Gosh, I had the bloody microphone on the whole flaming time. It's like, oh, I'll turn down mic one volume. No, it's plugged into mic two, you idiot. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. That's good. The noise gate's back on. That's more like it. This has been a Cassette Master production. <laughs>